In this video, we're going to do our third example on the free response of a two degree of freedom system. We're given the masses and the stiffness constants, and the first part of the problem is to find the natural frequencies and the mode shapes. So if you've seen my other videos, you already know how to write the differential equations in matrix form for the system directly, and I'm going to do that. So it's the mass matrix multiplied by the acceleration vector times the stiffness matrix multiplied by the displacement vector. Remember, your off diagonal, this diagonal is always negative, and it's symmetrical. Since there are no acting or outside forces, all of this is equal to the zero vector. Now, to find the natural frequencies, we set the determinant of the stiffness matrix minus lambda times the mass matrix equal to zero. So that's the determinant of the stiffness matrix. K1 is 800 minus 800 minus 800 and 800 plus 3200 that's 4000 minus lambda times the mass matrix which is 5 0 0 20 okay that is equal to 0 Let's do the subtraction. Minus 5 lambda, minus 800. Now the off diagonal never changes. So this product minus this product is equal to 0. That's 800 minus 5 times lambda times 4,000 minus 20 lambda minus minus 800 squared is equal to 0. If you do that, you'll find that you have lambda values equal to 97.538 and 262.462. Recall that the ith natural frequency is equal to the square root of the ith eigenvalue. So we have the natural frequency vector, which is equal to the square root of 97.538, um, which is 9.876. And then the square root of 262.462, which is 16.201. And those are radians per seconds. OK, so that's a partial answer. Let's highlight it. All right, now the mode shapes. So 
we have the stiffness matrix minus lambda sub i times the mass matrix. All that multiplied by p sub i, or the ith eigenvector, is equal to 0. So I'm just going to put a note. We're going to use the eigenvectors with the following form. I think it's called normalized, I'm not sure, but you'll always end up with something that looks like that anyway. Okay, so um, I think I made a, a mistake here. This should be And this is a zero, a bad zero, but a zero still. That's better. Okay, so just remember that this is actually this. So I'm just going to be lazy and copy it. Right. Minus five times. Yeah, actually, that's very lazy. Anyway, five times lambda one ninety seven point five. Three eight times ninety seven point five three eight one over R sub one is equal to zero zero. Now if you try to solve this, you're gonna get an error. So what you need to do is simply take one line. So let's say we're going to take this one times this is equal to this. So what we have is 800 minus 5 times 97.538 times 1 plus minus 800 r sub 1 is equal to 0. And that's going to give you an R1 value of 0 0.3904. So remember, once once we have an R value, we can directly calculate, or rather write, the um, eigenvector. One of the advantages of using the form 1 over R, R sub i is that we don't have to solve for like the first value and the second value, because the first one is always 1. OK, that's part of what we're looking for. So I'm going to circle that, highlight it. All right, I'm going to take this. The second one is 262.462, is that right? Yes. Times 262.462. We'll make it nice and tidy. That's R sub 2. Follow the same procedure, so you get 
800 minus 5 times 262.462 times 1 plus minus 800 r sub 2 is equal to 0. That's going to give you an r sub 2 value of um, let me check minus 0 0.6404 so our second eigenvector or mode shape one over minus zero point six four zero four so i think that we're done with a yes we are okay so I'm just going to take these results and copy them here because we're going to need them. Okay, so now we're asked to find the free response given an initial displacement for the first mass of 0.1 meter. Write that down. Um, and the initial velocities are zero. Now, um, just remember that, I'll put it in green. Since the initial velocities are all equal to zero, then the B constants are also equal to zero. And we don't have to calculate the omega matrix. So let's put that succinctly. And if you don't remember what these matrices or constants are used for, it's that the free response has this form. Now, um, there's a trap in that question because you're given an initial displacement for the first mass. Uh, you might be tempted to assume that the second mass doesn't have an initial displacement, but it does. And the way that we're going to find out what it is, is that we're going to go from the matrix form of the governing equations, and we are going to solve for x2. So let's consider this line. So you have 0 times x double dot sub 1 times plus m2 x double dot sub 2 plus minus k x sub 1 plus k1 plus k2 x sub 2 is equal to 0. Initial acceleration is equal to 0. So we remove that guy. And so if we want to have 
x sub 2 at 0. Well, that's equal to k1 over the sum of k1 and k2 times x1 at time equals 0. And that is equal to 800 over 4,000 times 0.1 meters. And that will give you 0 0.02 meters. Great. OK. So I'll leave that here. Sorry. We're going to build the P matrix, also called the modal matrix. Remember that it's simply made up of the eigenvectors. So P1 is, well, we're right here. 1 over 0 0.3904, 1 minus 0 0.6404. Let these guys come in here. Cool. So We also need to calculate the inverse of the P matrix. I'm going to simply write the answer. I'm sure you can do it yourself. That's a 6. 0 0.9701. 0 6. I'll just rewrite it. 0. 6, 2, 1, 3, 0 0.9701, 0 0.3704, 0 0.9701, 1, 0 0.9701, and finally minus 0 0.9701. Okay, we're almost there. Now we need to find the values of the A constants. I'll write the formula before, just as a reminder, A1, A2 is equal to the inverse of the P matrix. That's why we had to calculate it before, times the initial displacement vector. So you will get times the initial displacement of the first mass, which is given in the problem statement, uh, and the initial displacement of the second mass that we found with the governing equations. And so what we're going to get is zero point zero eight one five and zero point zero one eight five. Okay, so the final answer is x1 of t, x2 of t, that's equal to p times a1 cosine of the first natural frequency plus 0, because the b's are 0. Okay, so 
that is equal to, let's go ahead and copy the P matrix. The reason I write it out is so that for those of you who want to have a PDF version, it's easier to read. So bear with me. 0 0.0815, 0 0.0185, cosine 9.75, is that right? 876. Cosine, it's 16.404. Sixteen point two zero one two zero one T. Okay. And if you do that, you will find Zero point zero eight one five cosine of nine point seven eight six T plus zero point zero one eight five sixteen point two oh one T and then zero point zero three one eight Cosine of the first natural frequency, 9.786, plus 0 0.0118, cosine of the second natural frequency. And that concludes our problem. Highlight it. And there you go. So thanks for sticking around. Uh, as I said before, if you want to have the PDF version of this worksheet, then uh, there's a link in the description below. As always, thanks for watching.